2010 Planning Commission, please come to order. I'd like to welcome everyone here this evening. It's great to see a large group of here that people are interested in what's happening in our city. So with that, we'll be staying for the pledge to the flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Let the records reflect the members that are here this evening. <laughs> Commission members should have received the draft minutes of January 30th, 2023. Is there any corrections or additions to those minutes? Karen Moore, I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve the minutes from January 30th, 2023 as read. Second. As written. Second by Bill. All those in favor of the motion, say five to say aye. Aye. Opposed, likewise. Carried. Thank you. Delegation to action items for this evening. First item is the rest of, yeah, this is a tongue twister. Historical. 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 Yeah, college. We would, uh, Jim, yes, we. Dan, would start us out on that? So what we have right, um, Mr. Chairman, is the restorative cottage. And it's an acupuncture and life coaching business. Um, presenting late is going to be Karen Iberhardt. Um She will come up to the podium in a second. Um, the um, business is, is in general, the building is in general business district. It was a dwelling. It's being converted to a business. So your site plan is triggered at that point. And um, very low um, um, activity um, threshold is going to happen in the building. There are three spaces of which um, therapy can be administered. At this point, Karen is going to be the only person working out of the facility. Um, and um, there are there is the ability for a second and third um, therapy room. Parking for this type of um, nursing, if you will, is the closest thing we can find. And that requires three spaces per um, practitioner. Um, Karen's business plan is that one, you know, she only have one client at a time. A lot of her work is also life coaching, which will be done virtually. So the building may not even be used a good bit. So we need to be careful and stay in the parking ramifications because for the three therapists, at, at some point, nine spaces would be needed. There's a three car garage in there as well. Um, so um, Karen may address that. Karen, I'm still your thunder, but um, I don't think I missed anything there. Again, low low use is the building right beside um, what was Rob Tower, Rob's Tower Automotive. Um, so Karen, it's like, oh. I understand you're um, looking for a site plan waiver. Yes. Correct? Mm -hmm. Can you speak into the speaker better? Because I can't hear you back here. Sorry for having a colleague. My voice is just any better. Yes, it's better than. Put your hand up or thumb up if I start backing away. <laughs> Can, can. Hi, good evening. So it's Restoration Cottage is the name, and it will be a wellness center uh, by appointment only. And uh, I'm an acupuncturist, a nurse, and a wellness coach. So half of my work is done remote, and half of my work will probably be in person. Right now, I'm the only person wanting to use the space. Um, as um, I stated, there is possibility for other practitioners coming in. Right now, I don't have anyone lined up. Okay. okay. Do you have any questions or comments? So we just consider the, the, I guess, could you just go to the parking again so there's a maximum number that we need to have? So for a, a dentist office or a doctor's office, they require three spaces per um, um, practitioner. So our business is not like that, but our code reads it that way. So. 
need to make some type of agreement um, for parking. But again, nine is what the code would say for the building, but her business is different than a dental office or a doctor's office. Yeah. So is, is there any requirement, is there any requirement on ADA? Um, is this, a, is this much different other than the location than a home occupancy? Uh, uh, well, the, the home occupation business, typically for a customer and incidental, you don't have customers or patrons coming to the home. Um, a, a home occupation special would be like the single seat beauty salon, that sort of thing where you have customers coming to the property. Um, when it's a home-based business, I don't think the county pushes the ADA requirements on those home-based businesses. <clears throat> but in, in this instance, I would imagine that, that we'd be advising that um, there will be a change of use building permit required because it's going from a dwelling to a um, I don't know if the term clinic would be appropriate. It's kind of a, an unusual usage, um, but, but it wouldn't be residential any longer. So part of that building code process, the building inspectors and, and the design professional would address any required ADA issues. It wouldn't be really a zoning thing. Okay. <laughs> The um, Wilson Avenue Alley Street, is that st still a functional? I, I know it's a dead end and it's gravel. So what's the status of that street pertaining right. to what her business is going to be and the parking? At this point, it's just the driveway for this property. Uh, properties that used to be accessed by Wilson Avenue have been readdressed to um, Break Iron or Amica Street. So technically there is no, there, there are still references to Wilson Avenue in old deeds, but as far as the um, emergency services and everything, it's either East Baltimore, or Amicus, or Break Iron now. Okay. Now is there, is there access from the back? No. Is there a fence? Okay. okay. I mean, that, that, property, that property goes to the- The property goes to the back. Okay. You can, I would say you could access it from the back. Yeah. Okay. We're good there. Yeah, we're good there. Oh, doubt there's not a hard curb or anything. Right. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else happy? Yeah. Any comments from the floor? Okay. There again, you're requesting a site plan waiver. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, excuse me, one second. So, Jess, I, I highly encourage you to um, enter into a, some type of agreement about parking uh, down the road. That the understanding would be that she she doesn't need any more parking for she has for what's there right now. It's only it's only her. Yeah, um, and I don't think she's going to need it for um, the second, third. Right. But if if you all choose so, we would have to put in some type of public ag agreement, um, um, not really a public works agreement, but an agreement for if you um, open up um, room two and room three. We just have to be careful that um, you know it changes hands and it turns out to be a dental office. And the next thing you know, people are trying to back out on one one forty. So that's that's what that's the concern here. So okay. what would be part of the agreement? So th that if you were to um, um, permit me ask for a second and third, would, would, would that be a separate business? I mean, I think we have, I have enough parking, even if I brought in a second person. We've got the garage okay. there, the where garage. we've got two, at least two bays there, so that can be practitioners. Um, there's enough parking there if you go across for at least five cars, six cars right there now. Okay. Uh, so I don't see the problem with a second practitioner. Okay. Um, now, we have the whole back lot behind the garage if we wanted to put something there for a third practitioner. Okay. So what type of motion are we looking for? <clears throat> Just let her do what she wants to do. <laughs> <laughs> so we should, should address the 7th and 8th 
the ninth parking spot in the event that she goes, goes with the third practitioner. But there's plenty of land there for her to do that. Yeah, I was going to say this. Yeah. To, to access Wilson yeah. Avenue mm -hmm. past that garage, there's property back there that you could. Correct. So sure. that would address that issue. Correct. Or would we want to make the motion to limit it to two practitioners? Well, and then she would have to come back. Is the three for one an absolute? You seemed. Yeah. Is there any way that this could just be two for one? Um, well. I mean, a lot of practitioners are doing remote and in person these days. Right. So it is a by appointment only facility. It will not be a right. walk in. So, not be so a walk -in. there will be a sign on the door by appointment only. So it will be limited traffic mm -hmm. into the facility. So you're going to know the traffic that's going to come through there. Correct. So. Correct. So it's not a walk in. Right. So that's going to be. Yeah. So what's the purpose of the A frame sign in front? The A frame sign. I thought I read somewhere about. Go down at the bottom. Somewhere if you want to do a sign. Old plastic sign. Yeah. I'd like to put something up so that when people drive in, they know what it is. I put up new house numbers, you know, that kind of thing, so that they know this yeah. is the right place to come. And I'm assuming that's for, we'll say, by appointment only or it something. We'll say absolutely by appointment. There's going to be a laminated sign on the front door. Right. You know, my web address, by appointment only, please contact me. It in no way is going to be a walk-in facility. I like the last sentence where you said you'd like to put a wooden sign. I'd rather see something like that than an A-frame sign. I don't mean, even know what an A-frame sign is. Like, oh, a, it's, like you see on the sidewalk or like like you see in front of uh, uh, Hillbiles Insurance uh, Bounds. They have it, but that's a temporary because of the seasonal. Right. But that's they do have a so. That's a little bit harder to do on, our, on that it property is. because of the hill. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. There's a hill there with not the avenues, right? I know. Uh, to put that there because it would just fall over. So eventually, I would like a sign according to code. He gave me the codes okay. for that. So. Okay. So we're back to. Far, but as far as parking, we we just I think we just said that if there were three people there, we need what? Right. Six more for, parking spots, right? You need a total of nine. For this evening, perhaps, um, same for up to two practitioners. And, and, and then if it does expand to the third, then you just need to make another trip back at that point and talk about how you'll add maybe a couple extra parking spaces. Does it matter that that space is already there in the back? Um, is the yard not considered a parking space? No. It's not paved either. I mean, you have, what, three spots there that's paved? Four. Four. Okay, plus the garage. Plus the garage. So there's six already. Right. So if, if, and just to put things in perspective, if I wanted to take my house on, you know, whatever, East Baltimore Street and convert it to a business and come in and tell you guys, well, my customers are going to park on the front lawn, you probably wouldn't go for that. Right. So, you know, the code requires a lot of things when, when a property switches from residential to commercial, but when it's a modest change and the use is not particularly intense, we have the ability to waive that process. But that's our only our only shot to have these conversations about parking, about things like that. So, and since our code is, I believe, silent on acupuncture, we need to figure out the closest use that is in our code, which might be a clinic. I'm not, I'm not gonna take, you know, Daryl's interpretation away from him, but it might be something like that, or you know, the closest thing might be a medical office. So once we say, okay, now it's a, you know, a, a clinic, now it's a clinic, and it could be sold to somebody else who wants to operate a different type of clinic, and they might need more parking with that, you know, some other operation. So this is our only chance to to have these conversations. So once you waive it to be, say, a clinic, now it's a clinic, and you know, unless they physically expand, you don't get another shot at it. So that's why we just need to make sure that we have these conversations now. Yeah. I so still, still like to fall back to the two practi yeah, practitioners. I think that's reasonable. And I would like to take a little consideration on the property because Wilson Avenue is gravel. And the 
and means to get to their parking is on a city street, alley, whatever that's called, but it's Wilson, and it's gravel. <coughs> so would somebody like to put that in a form of a motion? Anymore. Excuse me? The city doesn't own that. So who owns Wilson Avenue? Me. Yeah. That's what I understood. Yeah, Wilson Avenue is gone. Right. Yeah. So then that whole strip all the way over to the driveway. Mm -hmm. I own it all. You own the driveway. Yeah. Yes, did did Creekside deed the sidewalk over to you guys? Yes, they did. Okay. Wasn't sure if that ever happened. Okay. Okay. So that puts it all in your property then, okay. So I would still like to see it put in with the two practitioners. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So would somebody like to put that in motion so we can move forward? So we want to allow uh, um, allow this business with up to two practitioners. Yes. We want to do. Yes. Yeah, make a motion that uh, we allow this business to uh, proceed with up to two practitioners allowed at the site. And this is a waiver for the site plan. Yes, sir. We're going for the site plan. Okay. So motion, okay. Motion, motion was made by Mr. Morris, second by Mr. Brown. Is there any comments from the floor? I'm sorry if I keep leaning back from the mic. Uh, any, any more comments? Okay. All those in favor of that motion? Uh, waiting the site plan, say five by seven nine. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Likewise. It's carried unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. I'll never make it through a CD. Next item on the agenda is storage today. Dale, would you like to leave us off again on this? Sure. So back when, uh, quite a few months ago when um, Storage Today came in, they came in with a concept plan. Um, it was very um, early in the process as far as the, in fact, I think the next day they were meeting with MDE to go over a lot of things. So the print that were delivered to your home Wednesday um, show a lot of the activity, the response to those comment letters that we've gotten from CDM Smith, um, you know, the county, so on and so forth, have all been addressed with, um, um, have, have mostly been addressed. There's one that needs to be addressed, it's item number eight, I believe. Yeah. Um, it, it talks about, there's a, there's a uh, pipe out there that needs to be sleeved or rerouted or whatever. And we're working on, we'll work on that. Um, but that has to be addressed at some point um, before. So in any case, so we don't well through the county um, um, process and um, they need to be updated certainly from a concept plan, but you guys know from there on that. Okay, what was the date for the concept plan approval? Has it been over a year? No. Okay, that's all we need to know. We've often been, yeah, so it's, it's under a year. It's um, quite a bit, but thanks for the Barbara Walters question. How's it going? Um, so, um, yeah, Jim, I think it was, I'm not sure which month it was, but we're in like the seventh or eighth month of that. Okay, so we're, we're in good shape there. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So we're seeking preliminary approval tonight. Yes. But the, we still got the issue on the wall and the storm drains, right? Yes. Is that the only issue we have? Uh, to my knowledge, that is the only um, issue. Is there anyone here from storage? Would you like to make any comments or? Well, Bill Brennan with the Northern Zion Group, I have our retirement in the contract purchaser with me. Um, basically, we've been through the county review process and they have no objection to approval of the site plan. Uh, in fact, we're well beyond preliminary site plan based on some of the county and, and uh, the uh, city's engineers' comments. We've supplied um, uh, building plans uh, for them uh, due to ADA concerns. We've actually done elevations and, and floor layouts and submitted them to the county. We've also done detailed wall plans uh, for the uh, city engineer for him to review. Uh, that's been submitted. And um, so we're well beyond the preliminary plan stage. We're almost to uh, final site plan and construction documents right now. The only issue right now is um, uh, 
the contract purchasers get uh, obtaining a title report that just came in today. Uh, there's a question of whether um, the sewer line on the project is private or public. Uh, so the title report will give us some information as to the status of that. And we'll sit down with the city engineer to determine whether we have to relocate the sewer or sleeve it. But that's more of a, a final site plan and construction document on how to uh, uh, on what the status of that, that sewer line is. Otherwise, uh, the only other item that we're not, that we do not have to go to construction is uh, final soil conservation approval for a seven motors control plan. So that's where, where we stand. So we'd ask for your approval of the preliminary plan so we can move forward. Does city have any reason why not? No. No, we just have to make sure that you know we're still we're still addressing whether it's a public or private sewer line. Okay, we can pick all that up before we do the final. Right. Okay. Any comments from the public? All right. I'll entertain a motion. I'm going to approve the motion to, for the preliminary site plan for storage today. That's stated. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Motion made. By Brown, second by Bill. Any further discussion? All those in favor of that motion, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, likewise. Carried. Thank you, folks. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next item is Fraser Property, Antrim Boulevard North, General Business District, concept site plan presentation for new commercial business. Daryl, would you like, or Jim, why don't we start us off on that, please? Sure. So tonight we're, we have a, um, we're calling it the Fraser Property, and we're calling it North. It's the area after the line heading towards the Vandenberg on the um, Grange Cargo Drive side of Antrim. Um, pretty exciting news. Um, um, they're proposing a uh, hardware store in the lumber yard, and um, I'd like for them to go ahead and uh, present, please. What you're putting up is what we have in front of us? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, my name is Aaron Valentine, with CLSI. Uh, this is Martin Rickle with CLSI as well. So this is the concept submittal plan for a hardware store and a lumberyard. It will be an indoor lumberyard. The property is about 14 acres. We're developing it, and it is a commercial use. The hardware store will be about 13,000 square feet, and the indoor lumberyard will be about 8,000. We actually have two options based on some input we received from the county. This option does not include the Hartman Street connection option. This is the second option. And this just shows the connection between Hartman, which is dead ended now, into Antrim, which is part of the county's master build out plan. Okay. So if you were through this, Hartman, or Hartman's, what's the name of that? Hartman, Hartman Street. Hartman Street. Yeah. You plan on connecting that to Antrim? Yes, that's, that's part of the um, county's master plan. Originally, our first option was to not do that, but after they had a planning meeting, we received that input. Okay. Yes. And it's going to be fenced in. Uh, this is very early on in the process. This is our first sketch of concepts in the middle. That'd be something we'd probably figure out through reviews and back and forth with the town and the county. Okay. So this is just a presentation. Yep. Yep. Just an actual. Do we have anything that predict, predict what's the what's the building going to look like? Is it going to be a metal building? Is it going to from type of stick board or what? We haven't got that far, but our client is here. David Lapp is here. He may be able to fix Would you like to come forward and tell us a little bit about your building? And... Good 
Good evening. I'm David Lapp. Uh, we live in Emmitsburg, and uh, I had this dream for quite a while already, uh, putting a hardware store somewhere. And so we're looking to. My thing was always, I want to put up a store that you're going to remember you were there. Um, so I want it to, it's going to be a metal build, or a get by metal building. Something like a butler building or something like that. Or, well, so it's going to depend on, on um, financing, see where we can go. But I want to, my, if I would build it how I envision it, we'll have large procedural seedlings, it's going to be a very, it's not going to be the average hardware store. I want to, I want to go above and beyond um, with the building, with the customer service, and uh, just make it a, a great community place to shop. Okay, appreciate that. My, uh, my favorite memory is going through him and hardware store across the street. If it wasn't there, he could find it. Yep. So, you got it. Mm -hmm. So, okay, any other comments? No, my only question was the Hartman Avenue and uh, the what? Hartman Avenue, Hartman. and we answered that already. So that's okay. Uh, that was any question I had. Sir, in the back, come forward, please. <laughs> Please state your name. My name is Mike Marasco. I'm at 177 Carnival Drive. The backyard would face this site map. And according to this picture I have here, it's called Fourth Retention Area as of 1991. Now, how can you sell Fourth Retention land to somebody to build a business? Okay. Uh, see about the staff can answer that or Jay? Well, there, there will be a um, um, county um, pre submittal plan, and any land around this facility will be um, scrutinized. The site plan will be scrutinized by the county. What? Uh, when whenever they schedule it with us. It should be probably the next few days, a week, hopefully. Well, I don't see how you can sell it, man, that's been put aside for restoration, for what do they call it, retention area, without changing the surface and area of what's going on in our subdivision. Okay, so what are you saying is that? Here's our site map. And I was right there. And that sign's right there where the end of that, that dot is, where the area is. Okay. And they got them all along here, and there's a couple in the woods there. Oh, so, if you give land to be fourth retention area, Oh, okay. That's yeah. that 3.45 acre lot. That's, that's another, that's, another that's not the feasible property. Why did they find it? I don't know. Hey, so we're not giving away to anybody. We're, we're just trying to help the business process. So I understand that. again, that, that will go through um, the, the, the county process. Okay. And that would be one of the processes that we'll have to go through. Yeah, you know, this is a very vague way of saying what this is. Can we get a better understanding, a better map of where the store is going to be? Where the, one day where it's going to be in such a, you know, a regular blueprint type sure. look at. So I sent you an email with um, three drawings on it. I didn't get it. Okay. Yeah, it has the same, same things in front of us that, um, that you could use email and I have uh, um, emailed you back. No. What's the name of this? I'm sorry. I had emailed and asked for more information, and I didn't get the map. That's my wife. Okay. Okay. So you didn't. I think that right. it's lovely that it was sent to me because I requested it, oh. but I think that it's important to other people who are still in it, who are also in the neighborhood, to have the same information. Okay. Well, then they should have sent me an email, or somebody should have um, spearheaded a, a group to do that. I'm in my office 40 hours a week, and if someone calls me, wants whatever it is. If I release it to the public, I will. So you guys asked for it, I said it to you. If 20 other people have done the same thing, I've done the same thing. I didn't get it. So well, okay, check your check your junk mail, but I can prove to you that I said it. Uh, it was didn't bounce back to me. Okay. 
And uh, this was all I had. And what's the name of the store? Yes, then. We're not sure yet. Maybe Tony Town Supply or Tony Town Market? Well, this all seems very vague. Well, it is. It is at this point. Where this is just, this is, this is just a just concept. Just a presentation. Plan. Just a per concept. Okay. I'm just so, saying. So, so there are four steps. Information considering it's being built in the back of my house. So, okay. you know, the people on Carnival Avenue, the one side is going to be, you know, the back end is going to be facing that. So I would appreciate more information. Okay. So I'm sure as time goes on. Pay attention to what's happening here in town, and you're welcome to come to these meetings. And I appreciate your comments, and that's what we need to hear. Yes, we do. So uh, I'm sure within the next month or so, we'll be this will be on the agenda again. Okay, thank you for me, Speak. Certainly. No problem. Jim, did you have a comment you wanted to make? I was just going to offer that we are at the at the concept stage, so it's just a very very rough idea at this point. Um, a lot will need to be figured out by the developer's engineer um, as to you know how they're going to address stormwater management, make sure that the traffic's going to flow on the parking lot properly. There's a lot that goes into the plans, but at this stage, it's just the basic idea, and that's why we're here in a public format so that people do have the opportunity to come and see what's being proposed and provide some comments on it. And each time the plan reaches the next stage, the developer will present the plan again in a public meeting and there's opportunity for public comment. And those comments are considered. Um, you know, they may not always result in what everybody wants to see, but you know, we will hear the, the comments and if they're applicable and something that we can act on, you know, we certainly take that under advisement. But you know, this is this is the process. So the input at the early stage is is great. And there are a number of reviews that have to go on. There's um, you know, the, the county is able to identify any forest conservation easements that are on the property. So that will be part of the review process when we get to that point. But this is just the first, you know, the first showing of the plan. So there hasn't been any formal review really at this point. That will come once once we've had a pre-submitted meeting with Carroll County and start talking about which agencies will review it. So there's a lot that goes into looking at these plans, and this is really just the very rough idea for it right now. So, okay. And do you gentlemen have any more comments? Thank you. Okay, please come forward. There's a couple. I'll catch you back here. I'll catch you. David Fieser, uh, part of the Fieser Family Partnership. And uh, maybe to enlighten that gentleman, there is 14 plus acres of ground there, and uh, it has all been mapped out for years. And there's only five, like 5.12 acres that is buildable. So, you know, I don't know what the big concerns are, but I mean, you know, all the set aside and, and like that is, you know, it's not going to be built on. And whenever Mr. Lapp does it, he, he knows that he's going to have to pay reforestation fees and like that for the five acres that he's going to cut out to build his building. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Fraser. Thank you. Ma'am. Please state your name. Hi, my name is Rhonda Bordeaux. I live at 163 Carnival Drive. 163. Um, our yards already now get flooded from the water that comes down off of the back of the property. And looking at the building and where it's going to be, that's going to push more rainwater into our yards. Um, and like I said, my yard already floods by like a nine foot area in the backyard of my property. And I mean, is the city going to be responsible for, for any more flood water that comes to our property off of this? Part, part of this, it will be uh, flood management control too. So we will go through the county um, to take care of some of these issues. Jim, you had to comment? Right, so we, we actually have our own stormwater ordinance here in Tawny Town. Um, it does need to follow the, the criteria of the state. Basically, there's a model ordinance, so everybody in the state's ordinance looks pretty similar. Um, and Martin, if you want to speak in more detail, I'll just try to hit the basic idea. But the requirements are that the water that leaves the site post-development, so in its developed condition, 
can't adversely affect anything. It can't, it can't run off faster or more with more intensity than it does before it's developed. Um, and in addition to that, now the state standards are so tight that in addition to that, the water quality now that runs off is supposed to be equivalent to runoff from woods in good condition. So the idea is after stormwater management is done on a parcel and it's developed, the water leaving that parcel not only will be at the same or slower pace <clears throat> than it was pre-development, but the water quality will likely be improved as well um, because the runoff from a farm field or a, you know just a grass area is typically um, not as as clean as water leaving a, a woods in good condition site. So, so that, that will be again part of that process. The engineer will design um, some st stormwater retention facilities. Um, and um, here in Tommy Town, not much infiltrates, um, see, seeps into the ground, exactly. as you know. So, um, so that, that does present some problems and that, that can limit how much pavement a property can have if they can't, you know, they need to figure out how they can manage the runoff from the rooftop and the parking lot and the entrance and everything. And the idea is that they can't do any harm to the surrounding properties. They can't, you know, dump all the water off onto somebody else's backyard. So it may not make it any better than you see now, but it can't make it any worse. Okay. And also, because of the picture of it, it literally comes into my backyard. I mean, it's like literally the back of the building. Is there going to be a road behind this building for deliveries and things like that? Because there's not going to be literally much footage from the back of that building to my fence. And also, you said that it's going to be coming from Carnival Drive. The road's going to be put in on Carnival Drive between the two houses. So the existing stub of Hartman Street is, is planned by the city to connect out to Antrim Boulevard eventually. And typically when, when there's a planned street like that, it, it just sits idle until that property that it's supposed to cross eventually develops. And at that point, it's usually put in as part of the development. Um, so that, that's been a plan for the cities for you know, many years back when the Forest Glen subdivision was created. The plan was for that stub of the street there to connect out to Antrim Boulevard. Okay, are you going to do something about Carnival Drive? Because everyone knows, I mean, there's been hundreds of emails and, and complaints on the sites because our children play in the road because there's nowhere else for our children to go. If you're going to bring more traffic through Carnival Drive, our children's lives are in danger. They all play in the street, they play football, they play basketball. That little tiny side road right there is where the children ride their bikes back and forth. Now you're going to be bringing more traffic through Carnival Drive and you're putting all of our children's lives at danger. Good I'm, I'm, yeah. I, I don't really want to get into it. We already want speed bumps yeah. put in every so many feet. We've asked for street um, bumps to be put in because they fly through our neighborhood already. And many of our children have almost been hit. And this has been happening over and over again. And we've asked for help. And now you're planning on bringing tons more traffic through our street. I and mean, we already had a severe problem. Right. So I, I am aware that the police are there frequently for actually complaints actually, about yeah, about children playing in the, the street, the kids in the and street. and that's something we're we're addressing because I have heard that that has happened as well. Yeah, they um, are out there playing with them. They let them go in their cars. They spend time with the children on our street, and it's the only place our children have because we don't have a, a small park for them to go in. Actually, we want it for that little small street actually to put a little maybe a little playground in there so the kids can be there. Or, or something that would actually be for our children off of Carnival and Grand because we have nothing. And that's where our kids play. If you bring more traffic in there, that's gonna bring more trouble and our kids are gonna end up getting hit and killed. I can't speak in, in any detail to why children are playing in the street and why parents are condoning that in the Carnival Drive neighborhood. Most of the homes along the 160 block on have yards. Um, the townhouses 
you know, do have very limited yards, but the single family homes, which are adjacent to this part of, of um, where this property abuts, you know, do have front and backyards, much as any other house throughout town. So why? A lot of them don't why, have children up in that upper area. Right. Most but, of the upper right. children are, are right. on the lower. From 165 down, we all have children, and they do play with the children that are in the neighborhood. And like I said, they play their baseball, their football. Mm -hmm. You know, they go up there and play basketball and soccer together, and the street is the only place that they have because we don't have any side areas for our kids to play. We have nothing for our children there. Okay. Bringing in more traffic is going to be a big problem. We understand your situation. Your entrance is that really going to be off of Antrim Boulevard, correct? Yes. Okay, and there would be some type of buffer. We put a buffer between your business and residential area, correct? So there's there's always a screening requirement where you have a, um, conflicting uses like residential and commercial. So, you know, those buffer requirements are, they can be satisfied by, you know, fencing, or burn, vegetation, or some combination of that. Um, you know, but to be you know frank about it i mean you're still going to know there's a store behind you and the store is still going to know that there's houses behind them it's not going to be um make it invisible at least not right away um but as far as like the the loading and things like that that's something that can be taken into consideration as the site evolves as the design evolves you know if that's um i mean does it have to come back so far that it's literally in our backyards up against our fences I mean, <laughs> so the, the layout's based on the turn radius of delivery trucks and traffic, and like they said, it's very early in the process. Right, and then all the noisy trucks are going to be in our backyards. It's going to be all hours of the day. I mean, that's a total interruption to our lives. Well, I think the operation of the business of when the traffic will be there. I mean, the normal hours, I'm sure it's going to be seven days a week. From days six days to me. Six days to me. Six days to me. Six days to me. Six days to and then you're going to have something come to the back of the building and, and do deliveries. I mean, you're going to be right up against our fence, which, I mean, that's the whole reason why we moved up here, you know, six years ago. It was because we had woods behind us. It was quiet. We were told when we first moved here that was like a swampland area and that nothing would ever be built. Okay. And, and that's where all the rainwater would go and, and things like that. And now you're going to put a building there that's going to cause nothing but issues to all the neighbors. Okay. Well, th thank you for your input. Thank, thank you. you. Somewhere up. Please come forward. Your house number is 163, ma'am. Is that what you said? 163. Okay. Thank you. My name is Gerald Perry. I'm a resident at 173 Carnival Drive. Uh, first of all, I have to say that I'm actually kind of excited about this opportunity. We saw we a hardware store here in Pawnee Town, so this makes me kind of excited what it has to offer. I do have a couple questions for you, though, and things I'd like to just put into consideration. Um, first of all, the where you're going to connect Carnival Drive to Antrim, the property that is to the west as we go towards Trevanian. At this point, are there any plans to develop that as part of the um, hardware store and lumberyard? Not at this point. Okay. And that, that would lead you into the wet, wetland area. That leads into wetland stuff. Well, yeah. there's yeah. space there that could be developed. Okay. Um, the other questions I have are around, uh, kind of to her point, is have, have we taken into consideration things like environmental effects, noise pollution, light pollution, what that means for the neighborhood, uh, as well as what is this going to look like for our property values? And I know this is really early in the planning process. I just want to go ahead and put these concerns out here because those of us who live on Carnival do have these concerns. Why do we know that will be considered during the process? Yeah, there will be many more hearings here. Okay? Yes. Yeah, a, a number of them. That's all I have at this point. Yeah, we appreciate it. Pardon me? No, this is a conversation. Just feel free to come. This is, this is a work. Stay involved. Yeah. It's only a presentation at this point. Yep. Thank you. Okay, thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Thank 
one thing, I'm still Mike Moscow from 177. The one thing I've noticed too about having this site here, around Tanner Town, I found three different sites of abandoned businesses. What's the guarantee that they won't flop up and then we get stuck with a lumber yard that's abandoned? Well, life has no guarantees. I know, but I mean, why don't they try one of these other sites? It'd be a lot easier to knock down one little the property right across from Skeets. It's just one building, and it goes back a ways and stuff. There's about, I don't know, three acres, four acres there. It'd be a lot easier to knock down one building than cut down a big woods and take out all the stumps and everything. It'd be a lot cheaper. Okay. All right, thank you. And there's other properties right across from PNC. It looks like it used to be an old diner. And it's got plenty of property in the back. There's got to be five acres there that could be taken care of real easy, too. That would take care of an eyesore and also develop a business. And the other thing, if you're driving down Carnival Drive and they're bringing heavy trucks, that, that road is not made for heavy trucks. It's a residential road. That, that road will turn into nothing in a year. I've seen that happen more than once. There was 40 years of construction. So what's the plan to reinforce the road if it does go through to make it usable for heavier trucks? Okay, we'll take that into consideration. Is there a weight limit mm -hmm. on that? Carnival Drive, I believe, is weight restricted, yeah. so deliveries should be coming to and from the site from Antrim. Yeah. And that's something that okay. and with big, big trucks, they can't do that then. If, if the, the trucks would access via Antrim Boulevard, um, even even if even if Hartman Street connects, like the comprehensive plan calls for, um, Carnival Drive, I believe, is still a weight restricted street. So the only trucks that should be on there should be ones that are like making deliveries to properties on Carnival. Right. Um, and and it's that's an ongoing an ongoing struggle that we face here in the city is we have a lot of commercial truck drivers that do not adhere to those weight restrict restriction signs, and they drive dump trucks to their houses in residential neighborhoods and we're constantly trying to stop them from doing that but we have to be in the right place at the right time to catch them driving on those streets so put in so i understand what you're saying second but i was living in illinois and we had a street there was a residential street no heavy trucks on it mm -hmm. semis were going down it because your gps said so yeah before long, we knew that road looked like a gravel road. Mm -hmm. The cops were pulling over constantly. They didn't stop them. Their GPS says one thing and they just follow it. They don't care. The company gets the ticket. Right. And, you know, I didn't buy this property. I'm retired on this property. I didn't buy it to have it worked. And if heavy traffic comes in front of my house, that road's going to be shot in no time. I don't know how we can take retention property and sell it. I don't know how we can keep a road like that in place by having heavy trucks across it. Because you know yourself, these truck drivers are going to get whatever your GPS says. And so we're going to have problems. Right. So those other properties, two of them are right on Baltimore. I thought if you would have a hardware store, you want it on the main drag where people can see it. Not off to the corner around past the Ford dealership. And also, on that property, right across the road, the guy's selling a whole bunch of property, right across the street. Yeah. And instead of taking up all the trees and everything, it's a plowed field. How hard is it to put a building in a plowed field? So as, as far as the city's... Um involvement in site selection. Um, if somebody reaches out to the city, you know, I want to open a hardware store, I want to open a fast food restaurant. It's a plowed field. It'd be a lot easier, less cost than knocking down and taking out all the lumber. I'll make a deal with you. That that piece costs a lot more money. So if you come up with the extra money, I'll go for that piece. Give me a percentage of the stuff. <laughs> all right, thank you. Thank you for the input. So where I was going with that is we, we can point somebody yep. we can point somebody and what we do is we can 
we, our economic development director keeps tries to keep a current list of properties that are on the market. We know what the properties are zoned. We know what the uses are that are permitted on that property. So we can say, okay, if you want to open business X, here are three properties on the market where that would be allowed by the city. At that point, it's between the property owner who's selling and the developer. You know, I mean, somebody might select a site because they like the look of it. They might select the site because it's forty thousand dollars cheaper than the same size parcel across the street there's all kinds of reasons and the city doesn't control property sales just like anybody in the room here the city had nothing to do with how you chose you know where you chose to live or where you chose to buy um you know we can just point people to the appropriately zoned areas of the city but the city doesn't control whether you know if the zone says you can have an auto parts store you can put an auto parts store there. Even though we've got four, there could be a fifth if the zoning allows it. It's not like we go out and look for a fifth auto parts store. But again, if the zoning permits it, our job is just to make sure that, that it's developed in accordance with all the city and county applicable codes. And the zones be changed? It can be. There's a comprehensive planning process where the land use citywide is considered every every 10 or so years and um and aside outside of that cycle there needs to be either um an error um that there was an error on the map or something like that or there's been a, a change in the nature of that part of the community that warrants a change but um we're supposed to look at that citywide every so often and that's why you know basically the commercial areas are clustered together the industrial areas are clustered together and more or less residential is kind of clustered together it's it's um that's the style of zoning the city has had since i guess the 70s um where it's a separation of uses um, but we still obviously do have situations where we have some you know properties abutting each other where you have potential for conflicts like residential and general business you know we have we have residential properties that um you know unfortunately can hear drive-through speakers or hear you know music from a restaurant or things like that so it does happen and we can try to mitigate those things with buffering and screening and things like that but as far as the actual use of the property, if it's allowed by zoning, it's just a matter of getting through the process and, you know, it being a project that the developer thinks is going to be viable. So if they think a hardware store will be successful on this property, the code says they can have a hardware store. So now it's about making sure that all the rules are followed. So I'm sorry to go on about it, maybe a little planning and zoning 101, but um, you know, some of the comments and questions make it appear as though folks think the city has more involvement in choosing who goes where. So, and that's really not the case. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Yeah, I'm not done yet. I'm sorry, I didn't see your hand. Ford to Crop, 157 Carnival Drive. I've lived there 33 years. I have nothing else doing it. The kids are an issue. They're definitely going to get hurt if you let the business come through Carnival Drive. The other thing, I don't want the back of my house lit up like a parking lot. Okay, I understand. I can walk out there and sit in the dark and hear the deer. That's the other thing. What are they going to do with some wildlife? Like Where are they going to go? We have peepers. I don't know if there's any bald turtles back here or not. <laughs> but that is all to be considered too. Okay. And the other thing I wish is when you're going to discuss this, notify all property owners. Okay. Not email, just like this registered letter we got. No email crap. A letter from the city that you're going to be discussing this. Okay. So, but you got your letter. Um, I, yeah, I got my registered letter. Okay. 
That's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. But if you guys are going to continue to talk about these things, mm -hmm. we need to know in advance yeah. with a certified letter. Okay, so, you so nobody can say, well, I didn't get that. I didn't get this. You got to sign for it. I'm a good bit confused right now. You have a letter in your hand that you got for this process. Well, this meeting. The sign was posted out there two weeks before, and we're diligent about it. Um, CLO sign knows our procedure. We, we if, if you if you mess around to the 12th day and it's not posted, and I want proof of that. We're not going to let this hearing happen. All right, we want people. We want you to know. What the sign posted. The sign's posted out on the Boulevard. I don't live on Andrew Boulevard. But you got a letter. So we can only do so well, much. Our property's back to Andrew Boulevard. Yes, ma'am. That's the. That's well, we don't go down Andrew Boulevard and see a sign. But you got the letter, so that's why we do both. Um, you know, I don't know of another way, but know this going forward after tonight, it's a good chance that um, probably not next month, but down the road, there will be more. There's going to be many, a good bit more activity on this, um, in this, in this cha chamber on this property. The sign will be reposted, okay? And um, I know we put the um, um, agenda out um, about um, four or five days before. And we want we want it in black and white. Okay, so we don't want a sign. We want it delivered to us. Tell you what we're gonna do. Um, you somebody spearhead, um, be a leader. Um, get a list of people that um, want, and, and um, I'd be glad to send out an email, maybe even a phone call. Um, but the requirement is post a sign 14 days before the hearing. Make sure the certified letters go out. They're, they're eight dollars and ten cents a piece. All right. Well, then just send us regular letters to mail. Man, who's going to do that? So the requirement is to do that one time. I send that to certified in, in um, first class mail. Okay. Um, I think that's reasonable. And again, I'm willing to email you. Uh, I'm willing to call you um, when the next activity happens. But I'll just send to my office. And, um, and I'll do that. Okay? So I'll work. Make sure you sign up. Yeah, please do. <laughs> well, I, I can get you a piece of paper if you like, but yeah. I think, yeah. Um, I yeah. think we've moved far enough along with this. Uh, Bill, thank you, folks. Thank you, Mr. Lapp. Thank you. Excuse me. Thank you. 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 Thank so I just wanted to thank everyone for coming out tonight. I can understand your frustrations uh, because I'm a nature lover myself. Um, I just wanted to point out again, this is a 14-acre piece of property. We can only develop five acres of it. So there will still be um, a good bit of property that's going to be left intact. I walked the property on Saturday, and I just wanted to make you aware that so do we want a business moving in, or do we want a tent city there? So there's already homeless people living in there. So do you want that to keep growing, or do you want to see a healthy, viable business? Uh, the other frustration I can understand is you already have swing sets on the property. You have backyard fences that extend into the property. I can see where you're frustrated, because you know that it doesn't belong there, and you're probably going to probably gonna have to move it. Unless maybe we can just come up with a compromise. So I just, I'm not here to make enemies for anybody. I want this to be a, a viable community project. And again, thank you all for coming. Thank, thank you. you. I think um, that we're moving on to the next uh, thing on the agenda. I got one quick question. Did you buy all 14 acres or just five acres? Well, so you can develop it whenever you want. No, you can't. No. You can't. No. Five the elders has to be reunited and four stations and wetlands and set aside. Nine acres and wetlands and set aside. Okay, folks, we're going to move on to the next thing on the agenda. Okay, Lisa Moore. Lisa Moore. Lisa Moore. Yeah, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Yeah, I, I did too, but I didn't. Yeah, we had. Uh, okay, folks, let's, uh, let's move on with the meeting. So, who's those? Uh, Jim or Dan or somebody wants to move off on this? Why is that here? Excuse me, you folks at the door. Yeah, you know. Do you want to move your restroom now to, to Ralph I Antrim? No. <laughs> Antrim. No. Okay. <laughs> Definitely not. No, I, just, I just happened to have a piece of land next to it. <laughs> it just, this is just coincidental. <laughs> okay. Um, we're here because um, last month in January we granted the concept plan. Uh, and I see we got the drawings. Is there anything else you want to add? Daryl, do you want to? Uh, so, um, Here, preliminary. Representing a uh, revised site plan approval. Just speaking with the county, the um, county looks at this as a, I know I messed this up. It's a um, light. Um, simplified. Simplified. Simplified site plan process. So only five county agencies are going to be re reviewing this. Um, uh, landscaping is not one of them, just to be clear on that. Um, we, when, we had, we, when we had spoken, we had talked about a couple of things you see different on the parking. On the parking is that um, the uh, Merlin Drive is going to be paved to 20 feet wide. Correct? Um, so that satisfies the whole concern about vehicles being able to um, cross on that from the traffic generated from that, which is awesome. And then the um, parking on site, um, um, they went ahead and designed it per the um, parking specs that I supplied, whether in the city on um, the um, line. And um, that's about it. So they met all the obligations we put upon them, right? Do you have what we had talked about? Is the parking? Yeah, yeah. Parking is one of them. I took care of that. Right? Yeah, and there were some current concerns about the alley, mm -hmm. and and they they even uh, they jumped in and said they would make sure it's twenty feet wide, okay, all the way up to the um, curve at 140. Back to the property. The lights are there. Um, the lights back to the um, entrance. To the entrance. Okay. Yeah. I see it. I see it now. Okay. Like, yeah. So you folks have anything else you want to add? We're just ready to start working. We want to start working. <laughs> okay. Commission <laughs> have any comments? I have no additional questions. No, no additional questions. Okay. Any comments from the floor? Come, 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 up, come up to the mic. I just need to know where, what you're talking about. We've heard details about the name of the, where, where, what is this? Where the, where uh, the, the favor uh, house was at. I'm sorry. It's, it's, uh, it's got to be Belisa Mays Tiny Town. It's a um, little stone house um, at the corner of um, Maryland and 140 across from the uh, Bargain Barn. It's a little stone house. Yes. We're in the bar, but they're all present. Yeah. We're in the bar. We're in the bar. We're in the bar. Do you know where the ice cream shack is? Do you know where the snowball shack is? Has a big snowball. I mean, have you moved here recently? Yes, we've only been here. Six, seven okay, we're walking down again. <laughs> so, but in any case, it's, it's right on um, Main Street, East Baltimore Street, okay. um, across from PNC, beside. I know okay, this is their Okay. Any other comments? What type of facility is this? A restaurant, sit down restaurant, uh, carry out, what is it? Yeah. Carry out. Carry out delivery. Carry out. Yep. Okay. I'll entertain a motion for approval of the preliminary site plan. Who want to make a motion? Make a motion by Bill. Second. Second by Dan. Any further discussion? All those in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Likewise? Don't we? Is Jim or Dan or Don, um, Dale any reason we can't do a final? Um, if they met all the requirements that we asked, 
and there's no outstanding issues. Well, I haven't gotten all the approvals back through the county, but, but it was selling pretty fast. All right, so there's nothing that I was told from the county that, that gives me um, pause. Um, but do you know what's outstanding? What, what particular issues that not yet that no. we can move forward? No, I know a number. Some of the items have been um, um, addressed for the, for the building. Yeah, everything's done. Just what well, they're waiting for is 2010 to hit the gravel. That's it. So um, I went last week. So with with the preliminary, I still issue um, um, permitting. Usually that goes after final. Wow. Okay. So I, I haven't seen the file, so I'm not sure what letters are outstanding. So you Unless say we, we do have some outstanding issues. I just haven't gotten the final letters. Um, so, but again, I, nothing from the, the priest in Middle um, uh, gave, gave me pause. It was really simple. I mean, they're not even doing, um, um, they, they don't have, he didn't have a problem for the um, shrubbing or anything um, with, the, um, with that site plan. Okay, so then we should be another month then. What? In a month, because you don't have, we don't have all the information. Right? Do you want to recess and grab the file and see? Yeah, let me, let me let me see what I can find on that um, on that plan. We, we went. To, I went to Carroll County last week. He said the only thing we're waiting on is the zoning certificate from Tony Town. Okay, so is that for the building permit? Yes. Okay, separate separate issue. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Well, well, here's the other thing. We've had a scenario with my office. I get a, um, every permit that goes down to the county. They send me what's called the need for a city issuance approval. Um, we've it's been messed up for a little while, but but I think fixed. Well, let me go look up your case and see what I can't find. Okay, just a little bit more time, Frank. Okay. So they'll be back on the agenda for next month, is what you're saying? Well, um, I need more time, so hopefully we can just do a continuous while I get back from, from my office. Look at now. Can, we, can we have like a five minute recess? Five minute recess. We can wait five minutes. All right. I can wait all night. Jay, come for, for a reason. Or? Want to take Jay? Well. Jay? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, you know, in situations like this, in the past, you've given. Uh, approval conditioned upon getting um, all the county letters in the hopes that the county letters are going to come in this month or this week. Um, so there's no problem because if they don't come in by your next meeting, you can deal with it then as well. But um, they can't move forward if they don't get the letters. And if it's just a matter of signing off, you have in the past, you know, granted final approval conditioned upon receiving the letters. Scott. So we can make the motion pending. I mean, yes. Receivable. Yep. Okay. Would somebody put that in front of the motion? Yeah. So it's pending all stuff that comes from the yeah, county. Yeah, pending from, from the county. Yeah. What, what's this, this is the uh, final plan, right? This final will, approval. Yeah. So I want to make a motion that we uh, approve, do the final approval for the Bellissimo's uh, site plan pending we receive all the letters from the county that we're currently waiting for. A second. Second by Bill. Further discussion. Okay. So, so, so that means that if you get the letters tomorrow, they can get they started. Can right. Right. That, that doesn't hold you up. You don't get the letters tomorrow. You can get you get a permit. So once I have the letters in hand, which I will otherwise. Um, I can issue the permit according to what they're doing. Can you just email me and let me know when? Oh, I'm going to call you both. Very good. Okay. <laughs> That's all we want to hear. All those in favor of motion for uh, final approval uh, based on me getting the final letter from the county signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like what? Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank the guy up there. It's us. I uh, try not to try to stay away from this as much as possible. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. Ordinance and agreement to review. There's none. Bill, your uh, planning and zoning report, which is. Okay, a bunch of things coming up uh, just next week. On uh, March the uh, second, the following um, um, uh, items will take place. City staff will be discussing the concept plan for the um, 22 acres for Moral Park Extension. Um, that's pretty exciting. It's um, four. I think it's four. Hold on a second. Excuse me, guys. We can't, excuse me, we can't hear up here with too much in the background. Hold on. So, uh, so the Memorial Park expansion is for uh, multi-use uh, fields. A building that has three components. One is like a storage room, like the football field, football center house, um, a um, snack shack, if you will, you know, multi-purpose room that will allow for cheer to do their 18 feet height to blind. So that's pretty exciting. Again, that will be on March the 15th at the Parks and Rec um, Advisory Board meeting. At, uh, that meeting starts at 6 30. You'll be able to see what's going to be presented um, Thursday. So, March the 15th. 15th. And our meeting is at a start at 6 30. Um, Garden Ridge pre submittal meeting with Carol Green and Robert. Um, review will be also um, um, Thursday. Thursday's going to be crazy, Jim. Yeah. And then also for Thursday, um, City Manager Wyprick and I will meet with um, Carol County staff um, virtually to discuss planning major streets. And outside of that, um, Bowling Park, still waiting on the golden letter. Uh, we're close. <laughs> close, Bill. It's, it's, um, you you got to be patient on that one. Could have had a child already. Yeah. Um, but um, so it, it's close. Um, other than that, I have nothing else, sir. All righty. We'll move on to uh, our projects. Which you already covered those. Yeah, so um, I did reach back out the sheets on the, on the construction phase process. Um, I, uh, the gentleman's gone um, on dark on me. There's a thing called everybody has a boss. That's what I'm going to do next. It's just a simple matter of us getting the um, the ability to do things right. And I know that the ponds look like they're still more looks like it's being maintained, but we need to control that because that's something, it's, it's in our town. So, um, you know, we're holding their, I mean, they still have a, sh a shorty on that project for $363,000. Yeah, so uh, like the gentleman said, my goal, my, my job is to open one and move on to the next one. So, <laughs> I, you know, so I'm going to have to go a different route. But other than that, on, on the construction phase projects, um, Again, Duffy addition. If there's as long as they've been out there moving stuff around, I think they're moving the dirt from one end to the other. That's what it looks like. I mean, it's good. One spot just yeah, back and forth, it seems like. Yeah, I, mean, I know it's a large um, pad site, but I'm super curious as to what they're doing. <laughs> you know, I, mean, I imagine for infrastructure, for solar management, and that type of thing, um, and, and what have you, but I don't think there's going to be water in that building. So, and I know there's not a bathroom in there. I don't know where to get into that uh, a red shell. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so other than that, um, I have uh, nothing, sir. All right. Dave, you have a report? Good evening, everybody. Uh, I have nothing further to add uh, to than other what I said already. Um, it seems like all of the town's business right now is not dealing with uh, legal things that affect the planning commission. So you all can be happy, but I'm sure that will change uh, as the time goes on. We are, we're smiling. Thank you. All right. All right. Tiffany, how are we doing for the county? We're doing all right. Just a few things to go over. Uh, the fall amendment to the 2019 Carroll County Water and Sewer Master Plan was forwarded to MDV for MDE, Maryland Department of Environment, for final approval on Wednesday, February 8th. 
There will be no processing of the 2023 spring amendment as the goal is to complete the 2022 triennial update by late spring. Um, planning is processing that triennial update and municipal water and sewer chapters and maps were distributed to staff for review and updates and staff, um, county staff it will be presenting um, the chapters at the March, April and May planning and zoning commissions meetings. Um, transportation master plan, the planning commission continues to review the chapter, the draft chapters, the annual report. Thank you very much. Tiny Town has already um, turned all of that in, and we will be sending out a draft copy hopefully in May for review. Uh, 2022 Carroll County Hazard Mitigation Plan. Again, Tiny Town was at the top of the list of being done and turning everything in they needed um, while we're still waiting on some other um, uh, jurisdictions, and hopefully we'll be getting that back to FEMA this week um, because it does in in April, the requirements change, so we want to get it approved before April because we'll have to meet the new requirements and go through the whole process again if we don't get that done. Um, and the economic development study, um, uh, development and land use study, uh, the next public workshop is planned for April 27th at 5 p.m. and all the information for that is available online. Any questions? No. No. <laughs> Good night. Thanks, Thanks Stephanie. Thank you. Okay. Rule of the old business. Twenty Town Community Comprehensive Plan, Chapter Three. Everyone have it. I do have one other, one other item. So on the agenda, you see how it's a little bit different than it has been in the past. Um, up in the, um, um, after the review of minutes, there's more detail about what's going on in, in, in the meeting. So, so someone online can look at it. Uh, it's been asked for, so um, asked and she shall receive. Um, so the information's there. There's not a whole lot of room to do that. You know, and you know, you do this type, you know, so much on the agenda but in the ways configured. Um, so yes, we can change things and put things side by side or whatever, but I think be, that would make it harder. Um, for people to follow as well. So, but I did get a couple um, um, thanks for us adding that information. So, you know, people have to understand that we really do want to do the right things by you. You know, most of us here started, our volunteers started out as volunteers and put in years and years of, of work because no one would, no one else would in many cases. So, these people are to be commended. And um, just, you know, not what you're seeing on Facebook, but we're doing everything we can, you know. Um, so, in any case, it's, it's good stuff. Before you leave that, that thought, what really helps us up here is if you put in what you're looking for, if it's a concept plan approval or final plan approval yeah. or a presentation, whatever. I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Apologize. I left mine at home. Got one. Left it on the table once. Picked up this one. Got one. Mine's more tough. I'll delete copy. Yeah. Copy. Just move over and share. Doesn't matter. We can make it. Oh. Sure. Yes. Five minute recess. Put it on the table. And I just want to have everything else. Yeah. So anytime you guys are, are missing something. Um, so I'll email it. I get it. I need a hard copy. Um, that that screen does me no good. I'll, I I I kill many trees um, by by printing off something. You know, it's right on my dad on the screen. But I need it that way. I I guess I'm old. You know, I'm old. So you know, I'm, I'm I, use, I use both sides a lot of times. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like the cleanliness of um, a tablet or something like that, but uh, it, it just doesn't work for me for me making notes and comprehension and that type of thing. Okay. I have a quick question. Uh, while he's going down making copies, um, March 27th, suit everyone for the next meeting. That's good. Hey, Jim. That was a question there. Yeah, a question. Yeah, and you have a question. Yeah, can you? Please come to the mic, sir. Uh, I know, I can hear you, but. I'm Rich Frazier. We live outside Tony Town. Uh, 
you, you guys may not know what's going on per se, but you probably have more information than we do. Do you know what's going on with the old Hamble lot property? Yes. There you go. See? Okay. Can you enlighten us? $10 a question. So, $10 a question. So, that's a wedding venue. No, 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 no. Next. Beside the side. Oh, okay. Oh, right. Okay. And the front side or this side? This side. So, you thought about um, going to the bridge? The development? Yes. Yeah, the 20, 20 and 30 homes, duplex, triplex? <clears throat> it's, it's 50 total dwellings. It's 20 um, duplexes. And no, it's, it's 20 um, Tri triplexes and 20 of the others for a total of 50 homes. Um, I'm having a um, pre submittal meeting with, with the county and them this week, um, Thursday. Everybody's having Thursday. Um, so there is a um, there is a small parcel of land at, at on the Havilah side, if you will, um, that is um, um, commercial. That they they plan to at one point make it make a um, retail space there, which is pretty cool. I think it's five I think it's five thousand one hundred square feet. So and then you have that um, it is community village, so it's designed as community village. Um, which means um, it's, in this case, it is age um, restricted. And um, um, so it's dense, dense uh, construction as far as less, less infrastructure, um, less things to worry about, you know, 10 years down the road, 20, 30, whatever. And um, that's about it. Is this sort of goofy question. What about traffic management? Is there going to be a light put up out there? Or is that beyond your... Um, well, that is state highway. Um, so I don't care if it's 10 houses or 300 houses. Um, the county of state is going to do a, a um, um, traffic study. And it's completely independent. It's not, the, it's not the, the builders. It's not the city. It's independent. And, um, I just assume not go too far in depth since that's not on the agenda. Okay, I didn't see it. So right. basic questions, yeah. but I don't want to go into depth. <laughs> it may be on the agenda, but not, it may not be on Facebook. <laughs> so, so the things I've told you are real, and it was annexed in the in 2009. So 2009, think about that. So that's how long this has been able to happen. Sorry about that, guys. That's all right. Thanks, thanks for you being in trouble. We needed a break. <laughs> all right, back in session. <laughs> Uh, how long do we need off here, Dom? Where we at? We're starting to, I think you did a fine job at the last time we was on this, and you got your notes. Uh, I, got, uh, I got my questions. I don't have anybody else's questions. Well, I got, I got questions and stuff, too. So, so um, Jim, if you want to you know, just kind of work through work page through by page. Page by page, paragraph by paragraph, and write them down. Yeah. And maybe, maybe just for the folks who did stick around for this part, um, we're looking at the chapter three of our comprehensive plan update. This is the chapter where we talk about um, things that were recommended in the 2010 plan and whether we achieved them or not and whether they're still applicable goals for us to pursue in the in the upcoming plan. So, so as we go down, um, let's just do what I have is listed as page 18. Uh, does anybody have any comments on that? Uh, yeah. The question I had, and I, was, and I think you answered it last month, and I still can't get it right. Create a residential office zone. It was the very last sentence at the bottom of the page. Mm -hmm. We, yeah, we talked a little bit about that last month, and when when this was drafted for the 2010 plan, we were seeing a lot of pressure to convert residences along the main streets into commercial uses. That's right. Yeah. And um, there was pressure to rezone um, portions of Baltimore, York, and Frederick streets um, to commercial. And the idea was to try to preserve some of the character of the, of the city um, that you see when you drive through those main drags. And the idea, I think, was that maybe creating some limited use would ease the pressure on people um, and avoid like a wholesale rezoning of our main streets to make them all commercial. I don't think we're seeing those same pressures today that we were 
um, you know, 10 or 15 years ago. So that may not be an applicable goal anymore. Okay. So, but, but that's kind of for, for discussion. But that, that's kind of the history of it, I believe. At least my recollection. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So uh, just uh, just to be clear, I think we, we started about this before. So everything you have in red are going to be the new recommendations that we have underneath of uh, Chapter Three moving forward. Right. So these are right. So these are the recommendations from the 2010 plan. So we need to decide if these are still things that we. Okay. Are they things that we achieved? If we didn't achieve them, are they still things that we think are are worthwhile objectives? Okay. Yep. So, um, for example, the, the first item: encourage walkability between residential and commercial areas. Hmm. Um, we have, um, you know, new development has installed sidewalks, but we haven't done a great job of filling gaps where they exist, um, you know, to tie some communities, to make some communities have a walkable, accessible route to commercial areas. Hmm. So there's still work to be done there. So if that's, if that's a goal that we think we should still pursue, you know, we may not get there. We may not allocate, you know, the, the budget may not, you know, have funds that we can allocate to start infilling sidewalks where we need them. But in the event we want to pursue a grant to do it, Oftentimes, it needs to be consistent. You know, well, generally, anything we do is supposed to be consistent with the comprehensive plan and advancing the goals of the plan. So, if we want to still do that, we should still mention it. Understand. So, yeah. just keeping that thought, what you missed, just said in, in mind here, that street that we were talking about off of Cornwall Drive, Har Harpen Street, mm -hmm. that has sidewalks on both sides of that mm -hmm. street as yeah. far as the. Mm -hmm. I did it. Yeah. I was surprised to see it. I was glad to see that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and that, that's the current city specification for right. any new street. Yeah, there's sidewalks on both sides. Yeah. So that was a good plan back then. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. <laughs> overall, I think most everything on here, I, I mean, I think it's probably going to, you know, I think we should probably keep it, but it does look, it's a lot of work, so I mean, I know it's a long-term plan. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, Sorry, Jim, you, you good on keep, your... Yeah, I'm good. Just yeah. keep going. Um, so there was a... So you have a statement that says, uh, protect the intent of the Tawnytown Greenway alignment. Uh, mm -hmm. So when we talk about the Greenway alignment, we're only talking about, I guess, the uh, Antrim side bypass and not the Worthington Boulevard, right? So we're right. only talking about that portion. Yeah. Yeah, the Greenway was usually just referring to the Antrim Boulevard, the southern portion. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, that that wasn't referring all the way over to the other side of 140. That that whole complete loop. I don't think it referred to what we have been calling the Worthington Avenue no, portion. No, no, it stopped. Right. It stopped it's just, at 140. It's just from from Trevani Road yes. around the south of the city yeah. back up to 140, 140 in the flow vicinity. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Um, so then, uh, da, da, da. so we talk about cluster development, and I guess, I mean, I know what cluster means. I mean, what do we talk about when we say cluster development? You're just going to cram everything together? I guess I'm not really sure. I think sure cluster could have come up with a better word other than cluster. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so, I mean, In 2010, did we use that word that way? I don't know. <laughs> I, guess, I guess I'm just want to make sure I understand what it is. You know, we're going to develop a cluster ordinance. I mean, I don't it's know. It's like throwing everything in a basket and see what comes out. Yeah. So. And, and right, the idea would be to um, to preserve open space. Um, you know, rather than saying each. <clears throat> So, so we kind of say in our twenty thousand district, um, or even our forty thousand, which isn't on the map, but our code recognizes, um, instead of each house having to sit on a twenty thousand square foot lot, you could say, you know, they've got a hundred thousand buildable, you know, right. square feet that they could use, and you would have to use all of that if you allocated twenty thousand square feet per lot per the zoning code, mm -hmm. but if you had a cluster ordinance. You could reduce the lot sizes, but not 
increase the density necessarily. So you would you would bring the houses closer together in order to preserve more open space. Right. So it's the same. But thing it is. But it is cramming village. stuff together. Right. It's same as a community village. In a way, it's similar, but it wouldn't have all the all the additional stuff that community village has. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And that one kind of ties to. Um, well, it is it is part of the land use chapter is what that recommendation was from, but when we when we think about city infrastructure and things, um, you know, does it make sense to? Well, I guess I guess we need to look at you know is there is it desirable to have half acre lots served by water and sewer? And, and public streets, um, you know, is that something that we want to continue to do? Um, and when we start to get to the point where we look at the maps and we look at that yellow shading on the comprehensive plan map, um, we might want to have some conversations about, you know, is that in is that desirable? Is that the best path, you know, for the best use of that area for the city? Um, and that might be, you know, so we might circle back to that cluster ordinance at that point also. So yeah. there, you know, there may be a market for somebody who wants a half an acre lot, um, you know, but they're, yeah, but so again. I, yeah, I have, uh, um, you know, so I understand the, uh, you know, the less infrastructure and the perceived, yeah. you know, you know, better, uh, uh, a bigger area for the environment, you know, I understand all that. I, I'm still, I personally, it's only me personally, I have a problem with the high density uh, developments. Mm -hmm. That, you know, I, it, just because it's not the uh, the character of the town that I grew up in, that's all. <laughs> I guess that's the best way to put it. So, so I, I still struggle with that a little bit, but uh, um, yeah. I'm not a, uh, yeah. I guess I'm not saying no way, I'm just saying I'm struggling with it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I feel the same way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, so so it'll be in here, but I mean, it it we'll go through, and I mean, we get a chance to talk about it again, right? Yeah. We'll yep. Know. Absolutely. So, okay. So other than that, uh, I'm okay on that page. Okay. So do we do we do we want to keep the residential office zone, or do we want to? Yeah, so again, ditch, a residential off, office zone means, uh, you know, so I got a house on York Street and I want to put my insurance right. uh, place in there. I can do that, but we want to keep the house kind of looking the same. We don't, right, that's right. what that means, right? Yeah. yeah I'm, but that's basically what we have now. Yeah, I'm fine with that. <laughs> that's kind of what the restricted general business district was supposed to achieve. Yeah. But I was thinking more like a, uh, some type of combination of apartment building and office building underneath or something like, you know, offices. I thought you meant when you said about creating a residential office zone. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. But I don't think Twenty Town is designed for something like that. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I read that to be uh, my house in York Street that I grew up in. I want to put a uh, uh, insurance business in there or something right. like that. Yeah, and I, I think that was the intent of that yeah. that bullet point. Okay. Yeah. If that's all local business, so it's covered anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Well, at one time we were talking about the glass property back there, that 14, whatever how many acres it was. What if we put a building back there uh, that was residential and storefronts underneath of it or something like, you know, that was just talk. But that's what I was thinking about when we were, but when that happens here. Right. Mm -hmm. This, yeah, this bullet point was more about the the houses on the main the main drag on the state roads and allowing them to have some office uses um, without actually rezoning them. Um, kind of like you can have you can have a doctor's office in R seventy five hundred, but you're supposed to have an acre to do it. So you know the the um, for quite a while I think every every medical practitioner in the city probably had a variance on lot size because you know all the doctors we had in town were all on quarter acre lots yeah. um, in residential districts so um yeah so you can you can have some non-residential uses in residential districts and you know some of the some of the properties on the main drags you know gets the visibility for the doctor or the dentist's office 
but but you know sometimes we have interest in an insurance office or you know an office for a construction company you know something like that so okay yeah. So I'm good on that page. On the next page there, I think what you were talking about, Jim, so this urban mixed zone is basically what you were talking about, which is what we were talking about. Uh, you know, I have a question, yeah. Yeah, so the urban mix, mixed zone would be a storefront on the bottom, maybe apartments upstairs, so you, you'd mix them together in a zone that we would have to create, correct? Because we don't have that provision. Correct, yeah. yeah. So it's still good to be there. Yeah, and that's, um, I mean, the property has changed hands. Um, the, the main property that was the focus of that idea, um, and actually Darren and I will be meeting with them Friday to talk about um, a portion of that property, um, and maybe we'll glean some information from them as to what, you know, what type of development they envision, and see if that's something that can, you know, can match our vision for that part of the city. Okay. Um. Okay. Yes, this is uh And we're still working on the green on the twenty town greenway, which is the mm -hmm. the bypass I had to bypass. Oh. Yeah. So so on the, the paragraph where we talk about it starts with uh, implement a sidewalk retrofit program. So if you go down about three quarters of the way through that, I got confused trying to read this here. So uh um so setting aside funds to construct and chapter six transportation 51 maintain <laughs> so, so hmm. did i read that right so that you read it the way it's printed there right? so i didn't know what that meant <laughs> so we'll probably just have to go back and figure out what we meant to say there yeah I will take a look at that. I don't know if that may be a, an issue from um, cutting and pasting off the um, yeah. off the other version back into Word or not. But yeah, that's a little bit gibberish there. Yeah. Um, so so in, in <laughs> when we put this into the new uh, plan, will we have the uh, the statement and the uh, you know or the recommendation with the explanation as we have here? I mean, is that what the intent is? Right. Yeah, so I think I would so be nice if, to have that. Yeah. So um, right. I will work on putting some. I suppose like almost a response to each of the bullet points as to you know what progress has or hasn't been made for each of them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if for at least for all of those that we, you know, that we consider still relevant, um, if there are any that we come across that we don't think are relevant, we can just, you know, say that mm -hmm. instead. Yeah. But, um, and I think, I think that chapter six, transportation 51 should have been deleted. Okay. I, th I think that was probably a, a cut paste error on my, on my part. <laughs> so I think it's supposed to just read funds to construct and maintain sidewalks where they are most needed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so as far as the explanation, you know, I think that would be good to, to have that in there. So for instance, like where it says crusader, create, create a residential office zone, at least you'd have a couple more words that kind of explains what that is, you know, so that uh, there wouldn't be any confusion. So, you know, they know what our intent was. So, uh, okay. A lot of work to go. That's all, all, all the comments I had on that page. Well, I, I jump up to the next paragraph down when we talk about the alleyways. Was, wasn't there something we supposed to be working on with the, with the city council about the alleys? Or was that just in yes, community village? Community village. Pardon me? That is for community village. Okay, so where else do we have alleyways that we're talking about that this would apply to? That would certainly be the most likely area, I think, to have for a new alley. Um, and where we are kind of sitting with that right now is we did share some draft language, the same draft language we had before you with the council. Um, and we've actually um, had some conversations with one of the developers that's 
that's preparing a concept plan for a community village designated property. Um, we wanted to see the, the council's comments on that draft that you saw earlier was we don't want to give them a density bonus to, um, you know, because they're already getting space that they can now use for lots that would have been dedicated to the alleys. But maybe we should get more open space if they choose to develop without the alleys. So that, you know, it's still a little bit of a trade off that there's some benefit that makes it, you know, a nicer community or whatever. Um, Ice cream. If they don't do the alleys. So we're trying to kind of come up with what's a reasonable percentage, you know, to increase that, mm -hmm. that still lets a project be viable. Right. Because much as we saw with the community village as it's drafted now, if, if it doesn't lead to a project that someone can develop and build and, and sell to the public, there's no point in, in having, you know, if, if we're not in the, um, you know, if land values here aren't such that that kind of a project that the numbers work for it, mm -hmm. right. there's really no point in telling somebody that, they're, that they can develop that way if, right. if it's not viable. So we've, we've um, talked with a developer, well, developer's engineer, and um, they're going to try to put together some some ideas on, OK, if, if this is what Community Village looked like, here's what we could do, or here's what we couldn't do. So we're kind of waiting to get some feedback from them, because you know, not that we're necessarily going to do what they want us to do, um, but I'd like to have their input as far as whether it's something's achievable or not. Um, you know, I, I don't think we can say, you know, if it's um, 25% of the net tract area has to be dedicated to open space. I don't want to just throw out a random, okay, well, if you don't do the alleys, now it's 35%. Well, 35% might be huge for somebody, you know, for them. It might really eat into how many lots they could develop, and then the project won't happen. So, so hopefully we'll get some, you know, some, um, some feedback on that. And, um, you know, I'm sure, you know, Many developers and engineers would like to see. Uh, there's a lot they would like to see <laughs> that we're not going to deliver, and we're not going to give them the opportunity to do. Maybe, but but I think it's helpful to at least have those conversations as we're contemplating the changes we want to make. And maybe percentage based on units or something like that, or yeah, I'm sure they'll come up with something based on units. Yeah. yeah, so they have they have a designer actually looking at the site, you know, their particular site right now to come up with, you know, okay, well, if this was the code we were going by, let's see what we could do. You know, so. I mean, Gary, we, I mean, we want to have that in there, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. We're on page 20, right? Yes. Okay, what can be done with the um, so I had a question. Uh, so we, we talked about uh, creating a linear trail system within the hundred-year floodplain. I mean, uh, how, how much how much floodplain area is there actually in the Tony Town limits? A lot. Well, when I looked at the map, it didn't look like a lot to me. <laughs> but I, I think there's quite a bit. Within the city limits, there's not a huge amount. There's a lot in the growth area. Oh, okay. In the growth area? Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. I look so, at the whole, yeah. yeah. So it yeah. like along Piney Creek? Like Piney Creek, Creek has a pretty expansive and then floodplain. At that end of town, uh, uh, I guess coming across the, uh, the, the, the gully there. From Cross Mill Road, coming over down. Yeah. Down here by the that was, uh, Duffy, Duff, uh, Duffy's. Duffy's. Yeah, yeah. But I think there, there are some. I think on the the opposite side from Allendale Lane. I think in that that area where Crossmore Road comes in. Um, I think there are actually some wetland pockets over there. I don't know about floodplain yet. I don't. Yeah. I don't think it's a FEMA mapped floodplain. Um, but when the developer gets into doing all of their um, yeah. Yeah. The detailed yeah. everything surveys. I saw was outside of town limits, so maybe it's in the growth area. I didn't yeah. compare that map there. Um, yeah, so you're you're right though. Within the city, there's not a lot. Um, Frederick Street, there's a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, down down towards the bottom of the hill where the bridge is, there's some flood, hundred-year floodplain there. Um, 
We get mixed up sometimes the difference between Some of works on too. Your floor plane and wetlands. Yeah, yeah. And that could be, yeah. Well, I, I was looking at the 100 year floodplain yeah. map on the county website. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's what I was looking at. Yeah. yeah. But the, uh, so, so we have it in here. There's really nothing that, I mean, it's in our comprehensive plan, but it's really no action that we can take until that growth area becomes part of the town, right? Right. Okay. So what can, what actually can we do with floodplains, 100-year floodplain? Is there, other than walking paths, can we do walking paths and things like that? Nature, kind of nature we type of things? We can't do any structures. Um, we've, we've adopted the county's floodplain ordinance, and theirs is one of the stricter um, versions where some, some jurisdictions allow construction in the floodplain provided it meets certain criteria, like you can do elevated things or you can have flood gates that, that will allow water to pass through a, you know, a, a storage area on the ground floor and then the living area is raised above the flood elevation. Um, but in Carroll County, they don't do that. Um, so you can't, you can't do filling in floodplains, grading. Um, you can't do anything that increases the, the um, the 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 flood elevation um, in the air in you know should the area become inundated you can't put something in there that displaces the water and and um, you know broadens the floodplain or or affects the downstream property so there's really not a whole lot you, you can do okay. you know. hey, walkway <laughs> so and yeah with, with some signs that say this is an oak tree <laughs> I thought about the walkways but then you run, run with the issues of ADA right. so you, you know you kind of run it. Yeah. And unless yeah, you make it a nature, just an open nature type thing and, and get credit for that somehow as a usage or a designation other than the hundred year. Right. And you know, we, we do have a lot of restrictions in place that make stuff like that, you know. If we, we talk about, you know, this this trail network that it's like well you can't do anything else there so we make we'll make it an, an, you know a natural amenity and people like to walk um you know the the walking trail around the pond gets a tremendous amount of use um hopefully once we get through with Bollinger park you know hopefully that will be used probably not to the same extent because it's not as convenient but um you know, but but then we also have things like um, you know stream buffers where we can't disturb anything within so many feet of a stream. So, you know, we do. It, there is a lot of regulation we need to deal with. To do something like that. It's um, as as we're learning with Bollinger Park. It's um, even you know just building something with a walking trail can be. You know, now now our our goal of making it an ADA compliant trail certainly made it much much more difficult um but you know we're finding there's a lot a lot involved with with it um you know more than i think we would have imagined getting into it okay. <clears throat> all right yep. so i was good with that most everything else on the, on that page down i'm on the bottom uh, paragraph um so it says that at the city level, water and sewer police production are the major issues that fall under the city jurisdiction. Um, so I, I realize that uh, they pay for the police and the city pays for the police and stuff like that. But it, I guess it seemed strange that they didn't we didn't really talk about uh, considering uh, the fire department or the services that are provided by the fire department. Um, I think the fire department is, pages uh, back here. is uh, you know, we're, we exist because we're in the charter of Tony Town, right? So uh, I guess I was kind of, I didn't know where that was addressed anywhere. I guess when they do the adequate public facilities ordinance, I don't know if they consider the fire department. They do, yeah, and that's, part, that's somewhere here, because I got a note about the fire department. Uh, I find it hard to believe that we keep putting up buildings if they consider it. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, um, okay, so I'm, we're good on 20. So you think that, so that's in here somewhere? Somewhere I don't know if you were about okay. something about it. Okay. Because it says about the police and something else and the fire department was missed. Okay, yep, I'll, I'll relook. So, um, 21. Bill, are you okay? Yeah, so far. Okay. Um, 
So on uh, the second bullet down, so we talk about uh, uh, we, want, we want to expand the senior status uh, senior center site, um, but then it, it talks about Carroll County should promote ways to expand communities. So I mean, this this is like a, a town comprehensive plan. So I didn't know why we were talking about Carroll County uh, promoting. Yeah. Um, essentially, I think because the senior center is, that's a county operated facility, but it's within the city limits. So mm -hmm. it is still considered a community facility for us, even though it's not city owned and operated. Yeah, but I guess, yeah, for me, it was just like, I mean, we don't say in here, Carroll County should be uh, looking at these areas to put in trails or protect, and we, we say right. Tony Town should. So here, it just okay. seemed like it should say, yeah. Tony Town should promote ways. Say it again. So, so the second paragraph I'm oh, now here, right? So there it says, Carroll County should promote ways to expand community involvement in the use of yeah. this public building. And, so, and that could be maybe a, that could be better worded as something like the the city should coordinate with Carroll County to ensure programs are you know offered. That, that's so, something I'd, like I'd that. I'd be better with that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. I got you. Gotcha. I'm good with everything else on that page. Okay. Was there anything else down there almost next to the last before we get to chapter nine? I know you hear about the buffered area being buffered. Let me see what I got here. 22 growth area and farm out for any taste rest. Yeah, and that's. I guess um, I have something that needs crossing. I guess the issue was between right. the residential right. and the farm. farm. Yeah. Right, that's that's something that's been called to our attention repeatedly, you know, based on what happened with Meads Crossing and, um, you know, that, right, with, with there not being that much of a buffer between the, the dwellings and the agricultural, um, the preserved farm that's adjacent to Meads Crossing. Yeah, and, and um, this is just saying that we should, we should be aware of that and try to uh, do the best we can. <laughs> Right. Yes. Yeah. But like you said, we can't make the site beside it invisible. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay, page 22. Um, yeah, so on the uh, third bullet down for me, we talk about allowing a mixture of use yeah. in residential neighborhoods to promote a sense of community level, blah, blah, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, so I think what that says is that, you know, within like a, a development area, we want to have like small stores within that development. Is that what that, is that what we're proposing? I believe that is the idea. Yeah, that's that's an interesting one. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure I'm in favor of that. Uh, I'd have to think about that a little bit more. Because it, yeah, it um, there's a lot of questions about the viability of that that setup. Um, you know, and I think what this is, I think what this bullet point is um, shooting for is almost something like some of the older neighborhoods in Columbia have where they have like a little village center that serves, you know, Columbia is made up of, of numerous neighborhoods. Um, and a lot of them have a little village center that's got, you know, a very modest shopping center, you know, a dry cleaner, convenience store, you know, maybe another service business or two. And it's kind of embedded within, you know, the, a residential sphere around it. Um, and there are some that are larger that have grocery stores or something like that as well. Um, but they're, they're designed to serve like the immediate neighborhood or some of them were. Um, you know, I, I think that concept is, I, I think the, the idea was that, you know, you could walk to, you know, some services from your house from a lot of that, you know, area. Um, I don't know if that model translates to, you know, Northwest Carroll County. Um, and when we've talked about, and, and I'll give you the example of um, Section 7 of Meadowbrook that 
where they just put the four additional houses most recently. Mm -hmm. So not to, um, at one point that property was zoned um, for commercial use. And the idea was, you know, it could serve the Meadowbrook community. And, um, you know, it's turning out that, you know, small parcels like that that are not on a main drag are very hard to market from a commercial standpoint. Nobody really wants to locate there. Um, and eventually that little strip was switched over to R10,000, you know, so that they could put the, the houses there. Um, so I, I don't know if that, you know, the idea of being able to walk to some service businesses, you know, like we can downtown, um, not that there's that many businesses, but, you know, or, or folks, you know, out at, um, you know, Grand Drive can walk to the shopping center. You know, that's, that's desirable for a lot of people. But the viability of those businesses in a neighborhood setting is really kind of not something we see success with. Well, we really don't have and, anything and it, from and the And it also West. would require some zoning tweaks to enable that, and we, we haven't moved on that. Yeah. You know, we and, I mean, look at what we had tonight. Yeah. You know, residential, you know, property owners unhappy that a business was going next door. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't know how you, how you, you know, I, I would think some people would love to be able to walk to a convenience store, but, you know. I just think that if you were, I would think it would be a small store if you were yeah. in a development. So therefore, generally the prices are going to be higher and people are going to say, hey, I'm going to drive out to the grocery store and get my Coke instead of walking down here and sure. getting it. Right. I mean, that's what's going to happen, mm -hmm. I think. A small Harvey store right. right there where somebody can go eat a loaf of bread and a quart of milk. Kirby Reed's. Yeah, or something Kirby Reed. Yeah, that goes way back. But that, yeah, I mean, that's kind of the, the economics of it is, right? Yeah. That, you know. Yeah. 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 I didn't think you were that old. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember Kirby. Yeah. Yeah, so, so I guess I'm not. Yeah. So I don't know if that's something that, that, you know, we consider, you know, I mean, certainly to, to facilitate that, we would have to do something zoning wise to, to enable that really. Right. You know, we, right. we talk in community village about um, non-residential uses within the community village, but we really don't have much in the way of properties that are laid out with multiple zoning on the same parcel that, that would really enable that and with our um, our Euclidean zoning where we categorize everything by use and say these uses go here, these uses go here and so on, um, you know, that, that makes this village center idea really right. challenging. Yeah. So, yeah, so for me, I mean, if we put it in this document, as long as it, if it was saying that we're going to consider it, mm -hmm. I would be probably okay with that, but I, I wouldn't want people to read it and come in here and say, hey, your comprehensive plan said you're going to do this. So I'm not sure I necessarily agree. So I guess it depends on if it says yeah. we're going right. to consider, consider explore, something yeah. like that. Yeah. I'm fine with that because yeah. I don't know all the ramifications. And right, just don't make it so it's like demanding it. Right. Well, you think the words mom and pop is outdated? I knew what he meant. Mm -hmm. I do too. I mean, but I'm thinking. I, I still hear that, that oh, yeah. term pretty frequently. I do. Yeah. Okay. That's the only note I had on that page. It makes us feel down home here still. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right. Page 23. I got I, nothing. I had nothing on 23. Bill, well, I know you didn't. Yours is home. Okay. 24. Page 23. Okay. okay. Somewhere in that, I got a note here sideways dealing with the county and the county planning commission. Tiffany, I remember a couple years back, the county planning commission had a joint meeting with all the municipalities all at once one meeting. You know, it'd be neat to have something like that again for the county to give us some input or just just something that represents from all what eight municipalities would would be join them in one meeting. 
And it would could probably be like a special meeting that they wouldn't have anything special on their agenda right. other, than, other than updating us on things and just open for discussion, kind of like a big round table. It'd be neat to have something like that. Are you talking about the paragraph where it says encourage both city I don't know. I got too many circles. I, can't, I don't know where, <laughs> but it's okay. about the first quarter down. I think it's the fourth yeah. one down. Huh? I mean, I think that bullet point is speaking more to, um, you know, there being more additional training opportunities for both county and municipal yeah. planning commissions. Well, both, and our planning commission, not that we're talking about other municipalities necessarily, but. Um, yeah. And, and maybe there there might be some opportunity um, through the maybe through the Maryland chapter of the American Planning Association or something that could be made available. Yeah. Um, so I definitely think that we should be encouraging the uh, uh, you know taking advantage of training opportunities. So you know we went to to Frederick that was really good. Although it was yeah. the last day was like painful. <laughs> it was just. <laughs> It was long, 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 but it was uh, it was pretty good. Very and some of the stuff yeah, that we did, and um, but then I also think that uh, actually the conversations that we're having right now, the on-the-job training, I think is super valuable, um, and we don't really get that a whole lot. We we get mm -hmm. the packets handed to us, and we all look at them on our own, and then we get here in front of everybody, and then we have to talk about stuff, and and it's some. I really think the uh, if, if there's more an opportunity to have a cup of coffee, I got it that you know the the town has to be invited to it, but I don't care. We'll have a coffee and sit around and talk. But the the type of conversations that we're having now, I would appreciate having more of it, mm -hmm. uh, just to understand you know what people were thinking, what you've guys have seen over the years, et cetera. So um, encouraging that, I'm all, all in favor of that. So Jim and I were talking earlier today, <clears throat> and maybe um, you know. I'm, <clears throat> I'm not trying to get every um, thirty dollars worth of your stipend, but maybe for stuff like this, we do this before the planning commission meeting, um, the you know an hour before, for instance, and get some of this stuff rolling. So we came out of you know um, I'm kicking on this, and then we're this chapter we knew is gonna be very challenging anyway, but maybe if we can agree to um, you know over the next couple of months, spend you know, maybe an hour earlier on this and get some of this knocked out. I mean, there's a point where we're going to be like, all right, we're, we're making some headway. And um, uh, at least the things that we can do ourselves. If we do that, then we still should be open to the public. Oh, yeah, For, absolutely. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, absolutely. Yeah. no closed door meeting. Um, I mean, open to the public so we can get, yeah. if they're here and, they, and we bring something up, we can get some input. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it, it'd be, you know, um, Time them is the only same thing, seven, eight different, um, slightly different versions. And, you know, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I think that would be a good way for us to make some headway on this because we're way behind. We're not the only ones. No. But we, you know, got to get something out soon or, you know, we'll be changing the date again and starting over. <laughs> yeah. Yep, I'm good. Um, you think on. Next one down somewhere. I got a big note says R20. I still like seeing R20 somewhere. Yeah. I uh, can't remember what that means. I did this yeah. three months ago, two months so, ago. Yeah, so, so I, I guess my comment that I wrote down here is similar to what I said before, you know. So as, as far as having the uh, community village like as uh, something in our toolbox, you know, I think that's okay. But I'm not in favor of using that tool right now. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and, and again, along the same lines, then with the next paragraph down there, I just have a note that, you know, I'm struggling with the, uh, uh, the compact communities, mm -hmm. uh, concept. So that's just, uh, again, more of the same <laughs> for me. Yeah. And, and even, um, I think, um, R10, I think does meet smart growth, um, density. Barely, um, so you know, even even like you know, Meadowbrook and stuff is still considered smart growth. Um, yeah, I I I have a cheat sheet down at my desk, but I I probably shouldn't speak to it without my cheat sheet. But, yeah, yeah. Um, well, it's 
It's interesting what they say, smart growth, because it might be smart for one person, but not for yeah. the other. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's not smart know, for the farmers. Uh, <laughs> right. And I guess, you know, the idea being, you know, where, where community facilities exist and can, you know, can accommodate additional growth um, is the basic idea. But, you know, our traffic numbers yeah. Yeah. show us that, you know, Okay, you know, maybe maybe we're practicing smart growth, but we're still seeing a tremendous amount of traffic that's not generated within the city that's causing a lot of our congestion issues. And you know, okay. I'm sure not all of that's coming from out of state. So, right, right. so somebody's building somewhere that's somewhere still putting traffic on the roads. Yeah. You know, which well, yeah, we won't get into all that right now. You're on twenty five, right? I'm on 25. Okay. Yeah, so my only comment was on here was uh, we talked about identifying uh, and developing public spaces in the downtown area. Mm -hmm. um, so my only comment was uh, I'm not sure how to do this, but it sounds good. Say it again. Yeah. That, I'm not sure how to do it, but it sounds good. The, uh, oh. the, so the, the uh, uh, identify public space in the downtown area, you know, so not mm -hmm. Uh, lack of uh, parking, city square, public areas in the downtown area. So, yeah. I don't. To to me, I guess when I was reading these paragraphs, I was thinking, you know, hey, the, the old the old uh, town that has a park bench where people can come and sit and uh, watch traffic go by, that kind of stuff. And um, but uh, yeah, or someplace where where they could, you know, where we could hold events that you know wouldn't have to be at Memorial Park. Right. Where we could have smaller events like, that would be focused on the downtown area, yeah, like the the park that's uh, at uh, in New Windsor at uh, yep, seventy five. That, sort of yeah, right there. Yeah, that's, you know, right. that's yep. kind of what I was envisioning. Yep. Yeah. Or even, um, I guess it's not downtown, but like in Littlestown, they have a park that's just a block off right. off Main Street. Yeah. You know, that's um, right. you know something something akin to that, but that would be walkable for the the downtown area. That check. You know, would be yeah. like a public gathering spot. So, you gotta remember, Twenty Town's not like New Market or Ellicott City. I mean, it's it's Twenty Town. It's Twenty Town. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yep. Twenty Six. I didn't have anything. That's all marked out. <clears throat> Nothing. Twenty Seven. Additional comments. Obligation and expectations does this bring to the town? And how do we address them? I can't remember what it was. You probably only made those notes three months ago. Come on. Pardon me? You probably only made those notes three months ago. <laughs> <Right>. Come on. <laughs> I, I think, that, I right think away that's the first I... time we had this on the agenda. Yeah. <laughs> but I got no, I got my main notes. Yeah. I just, yeah. <laughs> I should have reviewed and made notes of what I'd made notes to. Okay. You had anything on 27A1? I had nothing. All right. Yeah. Jim, was it by chance something based on the feedback from the Sewell annexation? Because I know we had a lot of conversations about, yeah. about that since we're so, talking about annexations and development here. Okay. What page are we on? 28. Okay, on 28. Uh, about the fifth paragraph down, whatever, uh, we talk about adequate public facility provision. You've, we've got in there uh, fire protection, water and sewer service, but there isn't anything mentioned about fire and EMS service. It says in 2004 is where it starts out. Is Jim here? We would need a budget oh. amendment. Uh, See where I said it? Yep. Okay. Yep. Amendment for the um, for the long range and the short range change. You guys on a different page? Yeah. Okay. We're on 28. 28, yeah. Yeah, so this talks about the summary of new leg legislation, right? So it says in 20. Uh, 2004, we adopted uh, public facilities, right? Adequate public facilities provisions. Um, so I guess what you're saying, Jim, is that in, in that they do consider fire service, so we should mention it here. Yeah, 
in an adequate public facility provision, FAR, I know FAR is listed. So FAR and EMS should be part of that in this sentence or in this paragraph, I think. Okay. Yeah, I don't think that's supposed to be an all-inclusive statement, but you know we can certainly add fire EMS to it. Yeah, you know it also it, doesn't refer to you know, schools, um, schools or, for example, yeah, but that's yeah. part of right, it. Right, schools also. not in yeah. there either, but that's yeah. right. Yeah, as, as I said, I think that was just you know that such as was just supposed to be a couple examples, not not all encompassing. Right. That's the only thing I had on twenty eight. Twenty nine, one, two, three, one, two, the third paragraph. I had something about box stores. Matter of fact, I just had somebody the other day want to know why Twenty Town couldn't have a box store. We're having a hard time getting a hardware store, right? Uh, have them. Uh... Have him watch the video of uh, Jay giving the presentation on economic development. Is that in there? That where is this where he talks about the cost or the the density how we, that you have how to we, have? Yeah, we need more. rooftops before we get retail. Right, mm -hmm. right, yeah. right. That was a very. That's something we should probably we should probably put that online, Jim, because that was so well done. Is it all already? There, is it probably not called out? Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. as that is just embedded in the meeting. But it's out there. Oh, it's in the meeting, yeah. Okay. That's your thing I had on 29. Yep, I got nothing. And I just. What, what, what about the it, the, um, the box store? I don't know. I, I just had it there in red box stores, oh. question marks. Uh, 2010 reaches a certain population For threshold. Sure. The growth may, may also trigger interest in larger retails. Oh, okay. And that's, I guess that's why I picked up box stores. Okay. But what you have there is fine. But it, it actually, I know I'm just looking at the second paragraph down, and we talk about uh, the areas anchor businesses, Flow Serve, Evapco, and Horny Woodworking. Oh, yep. Yeah, that's got to go. Yeah. <laughs> and it goes on to say the former Cambridge rubber is being revitalized. Yeah, and I guess that's still happening slowly. Yeah. Okay, we good? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. We're good, Jim. Yeah, I think I, I think I still have some some edits I need to make on those last few pages, but we'll. Okay. But, yep. So, so we did, we completed like the first the three chapters, right? So, um, and, uh, I'm not sure if chapter two is demographics. Um, so I, I guess I was just, uh, so what we've uh, reviewed so far, I mean, I, I, know you got, I know you got one or two other tasks to do, but uh, we, we, will we get the, uh, uh, the next version so we can read I'm, that? I'm hoping, yeah, I'm hoping we can get another chapter and and talk about it in March I guess yeah, yeah, um, like the next chapter but I mean the previous chapters that we've already reviewed can we get an update of those okay to review? okay that's uh you have an assistant yeah. you got an assistant right <laughs> okay Harold? anyone else yeah, however you're oh I got the I got to write letters to the 345 people <laughs> you have anything no I'm good right I don't Okay. Nothing here. Um, the, the status of Lee. Lee Han. Oh. What's the status? <coughs> Excuse me. So Lee has, has moved out of the city, so he will need his seat here as well as on the council will need to be, um, well, I expect his council seat probably will not be appointed because we're so close to the next election. May, um, yeah. So um, hopefully the mayor will, I, I don't know if the mayor will want to appoint a, um, an ex officio, you know, to the planning commission for the interim between now and the next election. I will inquire about that. 
Um, but if anybody at this at this point, I haven't had a conversation okay. with the mayor about his intent there. So, but if anybody's interested, they could they could. Oh, so no, he would, well, this would be a right, councilman. His, his, his seat right, is the ex officio from the council, so we we need to have a. Yeah. Right. Ideally, we will have another council member sitting yeah, yeah. there, yep. at least until the election, and then they'll probably reassign who's the liaison to what department and who's going to be the ex officio for which board. So, um, but it would be nice to have, you know, have council representation between now and May. Mm -hmm. There's two councilmen going off, right? Or up for two re up for election? Yes. Two of them. Okay. Right. Lee and um, Dan. Yeah, Dan, Dan, Dan. Okay. Okay. Anybody else have anything? I'd like to say March the twenty seventh. Make a motion for adjournment. Motion to adjourn. Second by me. All in favor, thanks. Oh.